Hey, Jake Widgen with Moog Music. I'm here hanging out at Craft Music today with Larry Shera on guitar with me. And we're gonna be talking about the Moog Mogerfoger line of effects pedals. For the best deals on Mogerfogers, check out the bundles at Craft Music. So about the Mogerfoger family of effects, uh, it's good to know that they're all direct descendants of Bob Moog's original synthesizer modules. Uh, but they are built and paired into individual pedals to give you some really, really cool sounds and effects. Um, they are great with guitar and bass, but it's also good to know that they've been designed to accommodate audio of any level, uh, which you can uh, adjust using the drive knob. So you can take a passive instrument and crank it up to a really nice level, or you can feed this a line from a console or a drum machine um, and turn it down. So they're, they're definitely useful tools for recording as well. Um, they're all in really, really thick bent steel frames with hardwood sides, so built like a tank. You can definitely jump on these with boots um, and they'll, uh, they'll still be in good shape. Uh, here in a minute, we'll go ahead and break down each effect one by one and let you hear what they sound like. Here is the Moog MF-101 low-pass filter. This is the um, original ladder filter circuit out of the mini Moog, brought into a stomp box form so you can use it for guitar, bass, and other instruments as well. So here at the heart of it, and we're gonna listen to the filter alone with no envelope amount first, uh, is a low-pass filter. As Larry plays and I roll the cutoff, we're gonna hear this filter attenuating those high frequencies. It's a really, really smooth filter on its own, but now check out as we add resonance, this is gonna be a boost right around the cutoff frequency. Now as we sweep that cutoff, very, very funky, very mogey sound. You can operate in two pole or four pole mode. Four pole give you a little bit richer, lush sound. Two pole is a little bit harsher slope, so it'll cut through the mix real nice with guitar. Now, to animate this cutoff, give us a little bit more evolution to the tone, we're gonna add envelope amount, and what that's gonna do is let the filter cutoff open with your picking. So now we've got an articulated filter that's gonna respond to your right hand, and that'll respond to the input signal of your guitar, your bass, or whatever you're feeding in. The envelope section has an amount control, so we can make this more subtle or more intense. And then a mix knob, so you can blend your wet, dry, introduce this filter for as much or as little as you want in your mix. So here's the MF-102 Mogerfoger ring modulator. Uh, at the heart of the ring modulator, we've got a carrier oscillator that we are gonna hear as uh, turning up and down the amplitude of our signal. So at a very slow setting, this works as a really, really great tremolo pedal. With the frequency knob, we can adjust the speed of this tremolo. On the slow end, it can go very, very slow, much slower than most amp tremolo sounds will go. As we speed up, the frequency of the carrier oscillator starts to become very fast and something really interesting starts to happen. It's gonna start to cause our tones to become a little bit more inharmonic. And now we're gonna switch into high frequency mode. And we've got a beautiful analog ring modulator effect. So it's a pretty unwieldy, funky sound. Let's dial back the mix a little bit and we'll blend that with our, with our dry. There we go, I can bring back some more musical tones, but we've got some nice metallic overtones in the background there. So, so far we're listening to just the carrier oscillator do its thing, but the MF-102 also has an onboard LFO. It's a low frequency oscillator that will let us adjust the frequency of the carrier oscillator. So. We'll set to a nice sine wave. And as we add LFO amount, I'll turn the mix back to 100%. We're gonna hear our frequency sweep back and forth. 
So adding some further interest and complexity to this cool sound. We can also switch it into a square wave LFO. Some really, really lush ring mod tones. But now let's do something else cool. Let's go back to our slow amp trim sound. And now knowing how the LFO can affect that, we're gonna add a really, really slow rate sine wave. And what we're gonna get is a wobbly tremolo sound. Now we've got something that will speed up and slow down at the rate of the LFO, so it's a really interesting tone you can't get from other pedals, where we've got this sort of wobbly swaying tremolo back and forth. So uh, it's a really, really deep pedal for anything from some lush tremolo to an interesting wobbly tremolo to really over-the-top metallic ring modulator tones. Here's the Moog MF-103 12-stage phaser. This is the ultimate in analog phasing. Uh, this pedal is uh, incredibly deep and gives you unmatched tone and flexibility. At the heart of this phaser uh, is a 12-stage comb filter as opposed to six in most other phasing uh, type pedals. And with the LFO at zero, it's actually gonna remain totally static and it will stay put wherever I leave this sweep knob. So as I sweep back and forth, we can hear some really, really cool manual phasing. All we have to do to animate this now, give us a little bit more of a, a swaying phase like we're used to hearing, is add some LFO amount. Now we've got a six stage switch, so you can switch back and forth between a little bit thinner, more of a vintage sounding phaser pedal, or the full range 12 stage will give you that really big, lush phasing sound. Uh, the other thing about this phaser, like all Mogerfogers, is it can go very, very deep into this effect. We can add a lot more LFO amount than you can get from other pedals, which means that up around the stun level, and definitely once you get up to kill, we can go really, really deep into that phasing sound. Some incredibly huge phaser sounds. The other thing that's exceptionally cool about this pedal is that this LFO has a very, very large range of speed or, uh, or rate. On the low side, we can have it running very, very slowly, where it takes more than a full minute to go through a cycle. On the high end, it can be very, very fast, so you can get some very, very cool high frequency modulation of your phaser sweep for some really interesting metallic tones. And then very quickly we can dial back our amount, dial back our rate, and we've got a nice smooth guitar phase sound. Here's the Moog MF-105M MIDI Murph pedal. This is a really, really cool all-original effect from Moog. What you've got here is a set of eight resonant filters, kind of set up like EQ sliders. So right now, uh, with no pattern running, it's going to work like an EQ. So we can kind of use these filters to shape our tone in some cool ways. But what really drives the Murph and makes it a cool effect is that it's got an onboard sequencer that will sequence in and out of these eight filters in your array. So we can use the sliders to make some cool rhythms. Out of this pattern right now, it's just sweeping one by one from left to right. We can also change the envelope or the transition from filter to filter with the envelope knob here. Right now we've got a nice hard attack, so it's very percussive, but we can smooth it out. So we've got a really, really lush transition between each one. It's a neat sound to slow down your rate and have a smooth envelope, and now we've got a slowly evolving cool rhythm guitar sound for chording. 
The other thing is on board you've got 12 different patterns. It's going to change the way uh, these filters are, are introduced so you can get some really, really neat sounds. There's a frequency shift switch so that uh, you can get into more of a bass range or we can switch it up to a more mid-range sound. You can pick the range that best suits your instrument. Also, this pedal has a MIDI jack in the back that lets you control all the knobs on the face. You can also uh, MIDI sync the tempo of your sequence here, uh, as well as building your own different patterns inside the computer that you can play the pedal with. So, really, really fun uh, pedal to use for recording uh, and any kind of digital music as well. Here's the Moog MF107 Freak Box. This is another really original uh, effect from Moog Music, and it's different from other effects in that it's not processing your audio. It is actually uh, an internal oscillator that you're going to blend with the sound of your guitar and actually sync to uh, the pitch of your guitar. So let's turn on and give a listen. We're going to try it out first with the sync off. So. Larry's picking is opening up the amp and we're hearing the, uh, the oscillator that's inside this pedal. We've got a totally linear waveform uh, with this pedal. You can go anywhere from triangle to saw, square and pulse and every wave in between. And right now with the sync off, it's gonna play this one set frequency. So no matter what note Larry plays into it, we're hearing that E drone. So that's a really interesting sound. You can get some cool drone under your playing for some cool modal, modal jams. But what really puts the freak in the freak box is when we turn on oscillator sync, now this pedal is going to try to reset the frequency of the oscillator to the pitch of the guitar. So check this out. We'll add some envelope amount that's gonna shake the frequency of the VCO every time he picks, make things really, really cool and interesting. Also, underneath this, we can add frequency modulation. This will further deepen our tone a little bit with a very, very fast, uh, high frequency modulation of the VCO pitch. This is also a great pedal to pair with the Moog EP2 expression pedal. By feeding this into the VCO frequency, you can turn this into a really cool analog fuzz wah. Here is the Moog MF-108M Cluster Flux. This is a really interesting pedal that combines a very, very short range bucket brigade chip delay with a six wave shape LFO that lets you build analog chorus and flange sounds uh, from the traditional to tones like you've never heard before. Right now we've got a really, really nice chorus using a kind of a middle frequency delay time, a little bit of feedback, and then as we add a little bit of LFO amount, it's going to sweep this delay time back and forth ever so slightly to give you a really, really fat analog chorus. On the MF-108, we've got positive and negative feedback. So as we add feedback to the pedal, that's going to be more signal that's poured back into the buckets. And, like any good Moog, you can drive this into self-oscillation for some really interesting tones. As we come back and add negative feedback, it's going to invert the wave of the signal fe being fed back into the front, so we'll have a little bit more of a dark or a hollow chorus sound. So, this is listening to the pedal with a nice sine wave on the LFO. Let's add some more amount and check out what else it can do. We can do a square wave chorus, which gives you a little bit more of a hard flutter kind of a sound. We can go and do a ramp either way. And then random sample and hold is going to be a sampling of random voltages into the delay time.
The MF-108M also has MIDI in for full MIDI implementation of the knobs on the face uh, and syncing the LFO, so it's an incredibly deep and rich analog coursing flanging pedal. Here we have the Moog MF-104M analog delay. This is an incredibly cool bucket brigade chip delay pedal that lets you go from 40 milliseconds to 800 milliseconds on the delay line. The delay line on its own is incredibly useful and very, very cool and will give you all the tones of the original MF-104 uh, Bucket Brigade chip delay, but added gift on this pedal is the LFO section here on the right that lets you do some really, really cool things with your delay time. By adding this LFO signal, we can take a voltage that's going to turn our delay time back and forth so you can do all kinds of really interesting effects. For this one, we're going to do a fast pitch vibrato, but only on the repeats of our delay. We can use this pedal to build a really, really nice analog chorus sound by going to a very short delay sound and adding a little bit of amount of a nice slow sine wave. Let's listen to some of the other wave shapes on the LFO now. We'll go to a longer delay sound. We'll set it on a nice square wave. Uh, the pedal is all set up with a tap tempo for your delay time essential for guitar players nowadays so you can actually have your delay beating in tempo with the song but we can also tap the rate of the LFO by holding down the switch now it'll take on the function of tap tempo for LFO rate also the new MF 104M comes on board with the spillover mode uh, which it's engaged in right now so that as we bypass the pedal delays in the chain will die out naturally even while you play over the delay. If you prefer the old style where it's a hard stop to your delays, hold down to a green light and you'll get normal delay bypass. MF-104M also has a MIDI input that will give you control over all the knobs on the face. So a very important feature to all Moger Fogers uh, are the CV or control voltage inputs and outputs in the backs of the pedals. Uh, for the knobs on the face, there's a corresponding jack on the back labeled that's going to let you have control over that knob via an expression pedal or another device that puts out voltage. Check out Larry playing the cutoff on the filter with an expression pedal. So the Mogerfoger parameters definitely beg to be tweaked and the CV connections in the back are all the different ways you can interact and turn these knobs uh, with different devices. So definitely check that out. So here is the Moog CP251 control processor. This is not an effect in itself, but what it is is a powerful voltage controller to help you bring a lot more cool tones out of your Mogerfogers and other Moog devices as well. It's got onboard uh, an LFO square or triangle wave. It's got two voltage attenuators, sample and hold out, noise out, a four-way multiple, and a four-input voltage mixer so you can do some really cool things. Right now, uh, I'm taking a sample and hold voltage uh, out and I'm attenuating it with the attenuator so I can bring that voltage down a little bit and then we're feeding it into the filter cutoff on the MF-101 for a really cool original random filter sound. So this is a really powerful device that lets you realize and develop a lot more new tones for your Mogerfogers. 
So here's another cool idea. I'm gonna take the output from the pitch CV antenna of my EtherWave Plus theremin and feed it into the filter cutoff jack on the back of the MF-101. So yet another cool way to use your Moog Etherwave Plus as a motion controller for your Moogerfogers. So this is the Moger Foger family of pedals. Um, definitely a no-brainer for guitar and bass players in the familiar Stompbox chassis, but should really be on everyone's radar. They can process audio uh, of any level, so uh, they sound amazing with drum machines, keyboards, full tracks, and they give you a really full palette of analog experimentation. Once again, I'm Jake Widgen with Moog Music and with Larry Scherer here, hanging out at Kraft Music, and for the best deals on Moger Fogers, check out the bundles at Kraft Music.